To demonstrate how RevealX can simplify and streamline the process of threat hunting, we'll look at some possible start points in the Network Health Indicators section. Let's take DNS for example. Since the nature of DNS text records have been known to be exploited for malicious purposes like DNS tunneling, we can easily start a hunt by clicking on the text record queries in the Network Health Indicators. This takes us into a set of DNS metrics showing the quantity of TXT records or text records uh, broken down by requester. Here we see that this host workstation physician 01 is making a majority of the requests. So by clicking on the host, we can investigate further. So we see the DNS client activity on the left column. If we click there, we can go up and look at all the host queries being made from this particular host. So starting from the top, we see a few normal looking requests like reverse lookups and surface record lookups, but then we also see some type of arbitrary string appended onto an odd looking domain. So let's take this first odd looking request and drill down into records. And because of the high level of entropy for this, this query name specifically, we're only gonna see one record. But what we can do is we can take the base domain, this ext.eh, and we can uh, change the filter to a fuzzy match based on this uh, string here. So now we're seeing text records with what appears to be an encoded string appended on them, but we're also seeing CNAME and MX records as well. At this point, we could try to figure out the purpose of these encoded queries, whether they're C2 or data exfiltration or even binary infiltration. But keeping the stages in the attack lifecycle in mind, let's go back to the host and look for evidence of how this host might have been accessed or what an attacker might be doing with the access to this host. So going back to the protocol activity on the left, we don't really see any obvious evidence of RDP or SSH or any other common uh, protocols related to lateral movement. But just by looking at the top protocols in and out, we do see an anomalous spike in SIFS activity. So let's shift our focus to SIFS client activity. We definitely see a spike in the SIFS transactions relative to normal activity. So we can click files to see what files were involved. So we see a lot of accounting and financial related files accessed. So let's kind of zoom in on this 30 minute time frame in this uh, anomalous spike in file reads. So during this 30 minute spike in file reads, I'm interested in seeing what server or servers these files were accessed from. So drill down by servers on the left. And we see a majority of the transactions were associated with this accounting file server 01. So let's click to drop into the SIFS transaction records only involving this particular client server pair. So now we see that during the spike, not only were there a lot of SMB reads, but there is also a relatively high number of SMB writes. And when looking at those accounting related file names we saw earlier, we also see some SMB writes with an additional BRRR extension on, appended onto the end. A quick web search will show that this specific file extension is related to a variant of, of the Dharma ransomware. So now I'm going to change my filter to show all SMB writes. All SMB writes that contain a resource 
that contains that brrr string. And remove my other filters. And with this new filter in place, we can identify all clients showing evidence of the ransomware infection, as well as every file from every server that these clients have encrypted. This was just a brief example of how we used RevealX to simplify a hunt starting point, but also we streamlined our hypothesis testing with layer seven transaction records and then pivoted using asset behavioral profiles to find evidence of additional malicious activity that otherwise might have gone undetected and caused additional damage to the environment.